In this video, we're going to be demonstrating the development of latent prints with black powder. Now, latent prints are mainly moisture and oils, and that's what the black powder is going to be developing. So let's go ahead and show you everything that we're going to be using, and then we'll do a demonstration for you. So the tools that we'll be using today for our latent print development are our fiber brush, our black powder, fingerprint lift tape, We have fingerprint cards that we will transfer the print that we lift onto. And of course, a pair of scissors for the tape. And we have gloves. Gloves are very important. We don't want to get our fingerprints mixed up with any of the ones that we're developing. So when working with black powder, I like to use a spare sheet of clean white paper or lined paper, whatever you have it makes uh, it easier to not get too much black powder on your brush and it makes for a little bit easier cleanup. You want to be very careful because uh, you can see it likes to fly out a little bit. I'll just put that to the side. Now when you're putting powder on your brush you just want to put it on the tips very lightly. You don't want to you know mash it in there and you want to shake it to get anything extra off. You don't need a whole lot of black powder when you're developing prints, as you will see. Now there's a couple of different ways that people like to use as far as brush strokes go. Some people like to go in a back and forth motion, or some people like to twirl. I prefer the twirling method just because I think that it, especially when developing loops and whirls, you kind of get more of an all-encompassing, it gets it on every side of the ridge detail. Uh, and I just feel like it turns out a better print. So when you're doing this, you don't want to make too much contact. You just want to go in a nice, easy, back and forth twirling method. And you don't want to press too hard because you can either smudge the print or overdevelop the print. And what we have here, you can see there's some nice three distinct prints right there. Looks like those are developed quite well, and we're going to go ahead and lift those with our lift tape. When you're doing this, obviously you don't want to touch the bottom of the lift tape. Otherwise, you'll get smudges and whatnot. We'd like a nice clear print. So what I'm going to do here is lay this on its side. When you're doing this, you want to work from one side to the other so you get a nice clean line without any air bubbles. Okay. Just want to make sure that you've got that nicely in contact with your prints. And then you go ahead and lift. You can see that the uh, fingerprints are present. Let me go ahead and get one of our lift cards. And the same thing goes for the lift card, is you want to start from one side and work your way to the other so that you get a nice even application of the tape without any air bubbles. Some people like to use a pencil eraser to do this, or you can just use your finger. Depends on what you're comfortable with. Get your scissors over here, cut this end of the tape off. Smooth that down. There's your fingerprints there, and then what you would do is fill out the back of this card with all your information, case, time, date, where you found it, so I'd fill out the information on this jar, put it here. And let me demonstrate how, uh, when you're using this extra piece of paper here, how it makes it a little bit easier to return your unused portion back into the jar, as long as you know it hasn't been contaminated by anything. And you can save all of your 
unused powder. Taps it all in there. And there you have it. Seal that up for next time. For more information on fingerprinting and other crime scene investigating techniques, please visit our website at the Crime Scene Investigator Network. Thank you.